So I've been itching to play some Minecraft lately. Just one issue, I lost my account. So now I have two options. Either play Bedrock, or I can buy Java Edition again. Yeah, screw it, I'll just make it myself. Ah, Minecraft, the quintessential game about placing cubes and imperialism. Today, I'm going to attempt to recreate a few key parts of it in the Unity game engine. Now, to be completely blunt, I have no idea what I'm doing. I never made a game like this before, and Random Generation is not my middle name. Why is? So I may end up accidentally doing this completely wrong and having to start over halfway through. Though, who knows, I could do it right the first time. Also, I know others have made similar videos to this in the past, so I'm going to attempt to differentiate myself in two major ways. One, explosions. Two, I'm going to attempt to explain certain aspects of making a voxel based game like this more specifically. Making a voxel engine is pretty weird and confusing, I should know, I just did it. So I thought it would make sense to attempt to give a relatively simple overview in this video for anybody interesting in making their own Minecraft clone, or more original voxel game. Though I won't spend too much time on this, so don't worry if you couldn't care less. If you haven't already clicked off, then congratulations, it's time to start making Minecraft. I'm not already a programming genius, so I decided to start by following some tutorials to make Minecraft. I really hope the first tutorial I picked isn't horribly optimized, and I waste several days trying to follow it. Anyways, I started off by making some textures and a sprite. I then slapped these on a unity cube, and boom, first block. Then I made a script that instantiates a 32x32 32 32 chunk of said cubes. I implemented Perlin Noise, which if you haven't heard of, is essentially this randomly generated noise that you can use to make things like hills. Which is what I did. You may be thinking, this is going well and smoothly, I hope it continues to do that. Anyways, it then started lagging so bad that it crashed my computer. It turns out that using thousands of unoptimized Unity cubes is an absolutely terrible idea. So I tried to fix this by joining all the cubes into one large mesh and then optimizing that mesh. Finally, I made the hard decision of starting over from scratch with a tutorial made from a person who actually knows what they're doing, because I sure don't. So first I must pose the question, what are voxels? Well, voxels are these cube things. You generate them with code, and they're generally quite a bit more efficient than using a normal Unity cube. Why is this? Well, first off, each cube in Unity has separate mesh renderer, mesh collider, and more. It also still has vertices that you can't see. A voxel system essentially allows you to have a lot of cubes without your computer burning. So I started making one with this tutorial series. The very first thing you need for a voxel engine is a voxel. So I created a new script called voxel data that essentially just stores all the numbers, IDs, to make a voxel. Then I made a chunk script that creates a big block of cubes. The important thing is that these big cubes of cubes aren't actually cubes of cubes at all. All the faces on the inside of the cube that you can't see don't exist, which is exactly what I was trying to do in the past, so that's nice. Anyways, over the next few days I continued to work with this new tutorial series. I made it so that each block can have a different texture. Then I started working on making multiple chunks. Each chunk has its own mesh and script. When I add building and breaking to the game, chunks will update themselves without having to update the entire world. Tutorial number 4 took a few days because of bugs and things, but I eventually got it so that I have plenty of chunks, but only the closest are actually rendered. Right now the terrain is looking incredibly flat. Now, I'm sure I can create some hilarious jokes about your mother with it, but I think it's time to make it more Minecrafty. So I took some Perlin noise, just like before, and just kind of made some hills of it. Actually, playing the game is nice, so I added colliders to each chunk, and now you can move around on them. I'm almost back to where I was at the very beginning, I just need to add breaking and building blocks. So, I did that. Basically, I made a cube set its position to the block you're aiming at, and then made another cube set itself adjacent to the face. Then I made it so that whenever you right click, you add a block and update the chunk, and whenever you left click, you replace the block you're aiming at with air. You can also switch between all the different blocks to place. I added more textures to the game, like wood and stuff, so I can now build a proper house, and now I pretty much have Minecraft. It's time to make explosions. 
Then I made it so that pressing middle mouse button while looking at a block would return a message with which block it was pointing at. Then I made it so that whenever that block is TNT, it would destroy the TNT voxel and replace it with a new instance. This new instance is just a cube with a rigid body and a texture. In order to get the TNT to have a different texture on top and on bottom than on the sides, I simply decided to commit a few game dev war crimes. By this, I just mean that I added a plane to the top and the bottom of the cube and added the textures there. Then I added a simple growing and shrinking animation to the TNT and it sort of looks like it's activated. Side note, but you can kick the TNT. Yeah, it's already better in Minecraft. But now I have to make it actually explode. So I slapped a script on the TNT, slapped a countdown onto it, and then got to work making it delete blocks. At first I was planning on deleting all the blocks within a sphere collider. But I didn't have any functions that would do that, and I did not know how to do it. So I threw that idea away. I came up with a much worse idea of adding points around the TNT, and then rounding the positions of those points to the nearest hole and deleting the cube that is in that position. This looks absolutely disgusting. There are 120 points around this stupid piece of TNT, but I mean it works. Um. Well, I realized that updating a chunk once for every block deleted was a bad idea. But I also had to check the surrounding voxels after deleting every single block, because otherwise it would cause issues with the chunk border. So I sort of got explosions, but I don't want sort of explosions, I want explosions. I was planning on making my own particles, but I think I'll just take some of Unity's free particles because I'm kind of running low on time. So I made the TNT instantiate the particles after exploding, which well, looks pretty nice. I got bombs, let's get more bombs. Big bombs. Nukes are cool and will look nice in a thumbnail, let's add them. I started off just making a texture for the nuke. I then did the same thing as the TNT and instantiated an entity whenever you middle click on it. Then I got to work finding a good particle effect to procure and use off the internet. I found a free one online and stuck it on. But it turned out to be quite difficult to work with. The likes worked in scene view, but didn't show up in the game. So while the smoke for the nuke worked, it didn't really look like an explosion. After literally days of trying to get the light to work, I just decided to attach a bigger version of the normal explosion to the nuke, which looks fine, so whatever. And with that, the nuke was finished. And there it is. My Minecraft clone might not have trees, or mobs, or survival or anything, but it has nukes, so that makes it the definitive version of Minecraft. Thanks for watching. If you want to download it, there is a link on my Discord server, which you can join by hitting the link in the description. When it is all said and done, Minecraft cost $26.95, and my game cost me nothing, so I'm pretty sure it was a steal. So what it took me a month to make, there's no way that I could have done anything more productive during that time. Oh.